Okay. Just prepare your hearts this morning. This is indeed a very, very strange time. I was talking to a very senior pastor this week about the difficult times. He's going through incredibly crazy times within his church network. And on Thursday, I hope to meet with Steve Upple, who's got the same problems. Isn't it a weird time in the world? Strange things happening. And I've learned a lot through Rick's death, through Ray's death. One of the things I've learned is that there, I, I didn't think Rick's departure, to be honest with you, would cause so much of a disturbance in the spirit. I'm not disturbed, by the way. Okay? But I do notice a disturbance in the spirit for some. I notice that some people don't know how to handle themselves. They don't know how to handle the transition. And that's been very interesting for me to see. It's an education. There has definitely been a disturbance, a moving, a shaking in the heavens. Yes. And some of you maybe are not sensitive enough to that. You don't know how to handle that. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. We hear a lot about body, soul, and spirit. I study the body a lot. I think it's fascinating. I, I study the soul a lot. And in churches, you will get lots of teaching on the soul, right? The mind, the will, and the emotions. You will have had tons of that. Maybe on the body. But one of the areas that we're weak in is the spirit. What kind of spirit do you have? What type of spirit do you operate in? And I want to talk about that today because as I, I repeat, what I've noticed over the last since Rick died, is that people don't kind of know what kind of spirit they're even in. The Bible has a lot to say about the spirit. Scripture talks about the spirit of truth, the spirit of promise. It talks about Daniel, that he had a wise spirit. It talks about the spirit of prophecy. It talks about Moses, that he had a meek spirit. It talks about a proud spirit, a lying spirit. There are Dozens and dozens, that's not an exhaustive list, it's just a few examples. But if you look at scripture, you will find dozens of examples of the type of spirit that people can get themselves into and not even know it. Right? Take a look at this, types of spirit. For example, a good spirit or a bad spirit. Very obvious. A good spirit is to have a humble spirit. Amen. A bad spirit, nothing will screw you up longer than a proud spirit. Nothing's going to wreck your relationships, your life, your career, your ministry, than a proud spirit. A meek spirit, very good. That's when you've got power, but you don't abuse it. The opposite of that is to have an arrogant spirit. These are all the world, my friend. These are the world. And these are the spirit. These are God. People have an arrogant spirit. That's ugly. Some people have a beautiful, truthful spirit. They just are honest about themselves right? Some people are lying. I'll come back to that in a moment. A lying spirit is self-deceived or deceiving others. Some people, hallelujah, are teachable. And some people are totally unteachable. I don't bother with unteachable people because I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to deal with the teachable ones. So if you, if you remain unteachable, then no one can help you, right? Some people have a spirit of peace. Some people have an angry spirit. And you, I mean, I could spend all day on this stuff, folks. All day. The worst, there's two real bad things on this, on these lists. It's two real bad things. Pride is the one that will cause the longest disaster. Right? Pride is definitely the daddy here. But see this one here. <laughs> see in my experience. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've dealt with a million situations in marriages, families, homes, you name it. But the biggest amount of damage is this nasty thing, anger. You can build your reputation for 20 years and lose it in 20 seconds. Hello? Just not keeping control of your anger. Anger can live beneath the surface. It's ugly and it is so destructive. Destroy your relationships. Destroy your reputation. Just because you're not aware of your own spirit. Right? Hiding beneath the surface. I've written on your notes there. It's a very important one-liner. Often the spirit of a person is hidden by the crafty soul. And only crisis 
Only problems bring out that spirit. Often the person on your left or your right, they may have a nasty spirit. They may be bitter. They may be unforgiving. But they hide it behind a smiling soul. Amen. The soul is crafty. The soul is clever. And I want you to, to dig down deep and actually find out what's inside you. What are you really like in God's eyes? Not the well-rehearsed presentation for Sunday. Not what you present in work. I mean the deep you, the real you, the you that God sees. Who are you? What type of spirit is buried inside you? See the apostles... It's an amazing thing. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus said to his followers, and these are his closest followers, he said to them an amazing statement, you don't know what spirit you're of. Wow. So these were people close to Christ, and yet they didn't even know themselves what had happened there. If you remember in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, Elijah, Elijah was as bold as a coot. Hallelujah. And he's out walking one day, and a bunch of youths come out of the woods and they shout, Baldy, Baldy, well, don't mess with Elijah. Yeah, because he used his power, the gifts of the calling of God are without repentance. He used his power in anger, and he called down a curse on them. Bears came out of the woods and devoured, remember? Destroyed them. Don't mess with Elijah. Now, the apostles, all these years later, they were impressed by that abuse of power. And the apostles come to Jesus in a similar situation when somebody's misbehaving and they say, shall we call them fire? Shall we destroy them like Elijah? And Jesus says, you know not manner of spirit you are of. You don't know who you really are. Right? And the same, if this is true of those who walked and talked and ate with Jesus, my oh my, it's true of you, isn't it? And it's true of me. Do I know my real self? I grew up in Belfast with bombs and bullets. And there's nothing like a bomb going off to find out who somebody is. Those who run away and those who run to. There's nothing like a bit of trouble in a church before you find out who's a hireling and who was called actually by God. Nothing like a bit of trouble to sort out the men from the boys. Okay, I'll say it. Yeah. But what's beneath the surface? What's beneath your surface, friend? You know, when the Titanic was going down on my last flight there, I watched the documentary on the Titanic. And it was fantastic, but it was also terrifying. Some of those people, when the ship began to sink, became total heroes. And some of them became like animals. Didn't they? Terrible, terrible behavior from some fantastic behavior from others. It was all beneath the surface. And if you saw the two shootings recently, the shooting in America in the school, remember? Where the, 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 the policeman, if you've seen the video on YouTube, terrible! He's standing hiding behind a wall, bang, bang, bang. And he's pretending that he's responding when the kids are getting shot dead inside. Terrible behavior. And then you have the opposite in France. Did you see that guy? That was fantastic. He traded his life for a hostage who was taken. Admirable behavior. But it takes the crisis to bring it out. Amen. Oh, yes, it does. It takes that moment. And here's the apostles. Listen carefully. Here's the apostles, and they're getting vexed. Here's the apostles, and somebody's annoying them. And what do they want to do? Let's Burn them to hell with fire. Wow. Wow. A minute ago you were trying to heal people. Now you want to burn them alive. Just beneath the surface because the spirit was being stirred. The real person was coming to light. Amen. And I want you, this is, the title is very important. Lord, today, in a time of spiritual turbulence, today, renew a right spirit within me. Amen. And you pray that for yourself. We could spend weeks on this. But point one, for example, the discerning of spirits is incredibly important. Can you discern external spirits? Or can you discern your own spirit? They couldn't. They couldn't, right? 
They didn't know their own spirit, never mind someone else's demonic thing. They weren't even able to get a good handle on themselves. I mean, let me give you a few examples. Take this lying spirit here. If you, if someone comes into this church, right, and they start to say, I worship Satan, and they fall on the floor, and they're frothing at the mouth, and you say, I discern an evil spirit. You, d- you don't need to be gifted to discern that. Right? That's blatantly obvious. The gift comes into play when the soul is deceiving you. The gift comes into play when you can see straight through someone, even though the soul is so deceptive, so, you know, charismatic, that something in your gut says this is wickedness. Be, you know, behind this, a good example happened to me some years ago. This lady, new lady, joined our church. In Glasgow Church, very, very bunch of very, very smart people. Um, the church at that stage was very large. And this woman came in. She was incredibly popular. But as soon as I set eyes on her, a trigger went off in my spirit. There is something wrong. I just couldn't tell what. And I, I positioned myself to listen to her conversation sometimes. And to be honest, very quickly, ah, she's a liar. This woman is a compulsive liar. And I started to listen, and I was I told no one. I was patient. I listened. I listened. She's definitely a liar. She's a popular liar. Yeah. Very popular. And, and I left it alone. I just try and minister, try and be te- Are you going to be teachable? No, no chance whatsoever. But I, I've got better things to do. She, what, I intervened when she went to a cell group. Because now you're after my sheep. So I spoke to the cell group leader, and I said, there's a problem here. I said, go, no, she's lovely. <laughs> I said, okay, 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 okay. We need, we need to get behind that. I'm telling you, there's a problem here. But she wouldn't listen. And I had to draw the line as a church because I got a message one day saying, this lying lady, her daughter's just been killed. And she wants us to pray. She wants a church to pray on Friday night. Oh, wow. I don't believe it. Um, so but everybody, everybody does believe. And they want to take the prayer meeting and pray. So I, I couldn't get a hold of her. I emailed this lady and I said, I'm very sorry to hear about your daughter. Now, in her message, she gave the state that she was murdered in, the city that she was murdered in, the age of the child, and the ethnic race. So that's a lot to go on. So Google, hallelujah. <laughs> I go on Google and lo and behold, they have a website. And all the murders are listed on the website. And there's no child of that age. There's, no, there's three murders. No child of that age. No child of that ethnic group. Right? It's not there. So I emailed the lady and I, I said, you know, I'm very sorry to hear about your child. But could you just send me the official link? Not an email. Because you can create a fictitious email. I don't want an email. I specifically said no email. I need the link to the police report or the newspaper so I can go and see the official report of your daughter's death. Thank you. No reply. Day one, day two, day three, day four. And in the end, I get any, yeah, 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 yeah. You created a, a false address. That's what you've done. I never saw her again. It's because she was exposed. It's a lying spirit. Anything to get attention. Are you with me? It's not a gift when somebody has blatantly, obviously got a problem. But there are spirits. The Bible talks about a lying spirit, a deceiving spirit. And they're subtle, they're hidden, proud spirits. And you, according to these apostles, they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know where their reactions was, were coming from. Different nations have different spirits. Correct? If you travel around the world, you will see that different nations have different problems. Right? In, in UK here, in, in, in France, in Germany, in South America... Different cultures have different territorial spirits. So I want you to think back. You think back to your home country. What were the good bits? And what were the bad bits? And don't carry with you through your life a bad spirit. Are you with me? From your history, from your ancestry. You're born again. You're born again. You've got a new spiritual beginning. Walk in that, live out of it. Don't go back to this junk, this worldly junk. 
Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me today. Hallelujah. When I was first ever trip to Singapore, first ever trip, Singapore, the females, excuse me, just tell them the truth, have a problem with anger. You get a lot of angry females. And, yeah. Now, when, when, when I was, I, I told you this before, but it's very important, you see, because it's a great illustration. I got on the bus, some guys annoyed me, two of my pastor friends annoyed me, and normally I am very, very, very quick to lose uh, anger. I don't, I, I don't tolerate it. I don't accept it. I forgive very quickly, very easily. Um, but man alive, I was angry. An ungodly, unholy anger came over. I was going to call down fire on that bus. An ungodly, unholy fire came over me, and I was just, I mean, it's evil. I have never had that in my life. And it was when we got off the bus, one of our friends, Russell Hurst, slapped me and said, snap out of it. Well, he's absolutely right, snap out of it. Something got me. And I did, sh- I said, get off me, Jesus, man, get off me. What is that? Territorial spirit. Oh, yeah. Some people live with a stinking attitude their whole lives. They never shake it off. Some people are proud from the day they're born till the day they die. They never shake it off. Amen. Unteachable from the day they're born till the day they die. Not aware that you need to guard your spirit. Creating a clean spirit, a good spirit, a godly spirit. And cast off all of the junk. I repeat, different nations have different problems. Different people have different problems. And when you're around some people, they've got a bad spirit. And if you're not careful, that bad friend, that bad company is going to draw bad out of you. Right? So be careful. Territorial spirits, nationalistic ones, national ones, but also personal spirits. Some people can carry bad spirits and you you need to be conscious of it. And these apostles, these disciples obviously weren't. You are... Whether you like it or not, you're a transmitter, but you're also a receiver. So if I give everyone in this room a little portable radio, you could tune into any station you want. You can listen to jazz. You probably wouldn't. You can listen to jazz, right? You can listen to rap. You could, we could all be tuned in to a different station. And that's what your spirit's like. Amen? That's what your spirit's like. Last week, a great example during the worship. God was moving. I turned around Evelyn. Evelyn's down on the floor here with tears running down her face, just worshiping God and crying out to God. And I just happened to look back, four rows back, there's somebody checking Facebook. Same building, different channel. Not aware in their spirit. Distracted. Thinking about dinner, different channel. Food channel. Yeah. And you need to be conscious of your own spirit and control that, right? Attract a good spirit, prepare yourself for that, and walk in it. What spirit are you off, by the way? What spirit are you off? They didn't know what spirit they were off. They didn't have the discernment at that time. Number two, it says do not quench the spirit. And this is incredibly difficult to do. Because you have to balance authority with sensitivity and love. It is hard. It's hard for our parents particularly. I mean, my heart goes out to raising youth. My son James was incredibly well behaved. Very, very, very good boy. Um, But as I look at raising youth in today's world, may the good Lord bless you and help you. Yeah, because they go to school and get uh, such bad, you know, guidance. And then we have them a shorter time. They're in school all week. So and in church for one and a half hours or whatever it is, so it's very hard to compensate in that short window. Um, I, I would ask the parents here to take your children seriously. Uh, Pastor Emma is doing a fantastic job, but in my opinion, she doesn't get enough support from the parents, and it is a crying shame when we ring a child and the child can't come, and the child says, "Because my daddy won't bring me." It's your child, it's not her child. Hello? It's your child, it's not her child. Mommy's not here, mommy's gone out, so I can't come. But why are you late this morning? Because my daddy's late. Not good, is it? So please, guys, I'm not talking about being overbearing. There's no place for that in the kingdom. That's on the bad side. 
That's a bad sign. But I'm talking about trying to find a balance and not quenching the spirit in our youth. Amen. Trying to foster that and bring that on and encourage it at the same time, not getting vexed like Elijah. <laughs> right? It's difficult. It's tough. And I'd say, hey, guys, the way things are going, it's going to get tougher. Next week, Pastor Jeremy, the expert, is here. Right? And we pray for our youth. I'm going to ask him to do that and pray for you. That God uses you to raise, many of the kids here are still young. God uses you to raise your kids well. So not an overbearing spirit. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. And then point three, that today we say very simply, God, renew within me a right spirit. Now let me talk to those of you in business. Because many of you here in business, many of those listening around the world will be in business. Listen to me. Many Christians I meet and talk to get frustrated. I've been in my career now for 10 years, 15 years, and they're frustrated with their work, frustrated with their job. And time after time, I will meet Christians who say, I'm the best person in my, in my work. Nobody does a job like me. They don't appreciate me. They don't respect me. Many Christians end up like this. Unpopular in their work. Listen very carefully in Jesus' name. It's not just about doing a good job. It's about doing a good job with a good spirit. That's the problem. And many Christians get this legalistic twist. That, and then they become proud. And then they end up in their workplaces. Not nice people. Do a good job. Do a very good job. But check your spirit in your work. Check your inner attitude. I tell you what, friends. The lost are incredibly perceptive. They can see straight through you. See straight through you. Check your spirit in your work. Don't play the victim. Oh, it's because I'm a Christian. Well, it may just be because you're not very nice. Around the world, there's a saying. It wasn't a very Christian thing to do. Right? The lost, the Muslims, everybody uses that little statement. It wasn't a very Christian thing to do. And this world's, you know, perception of Jesus Christ ultimately is someone who is good and kind and loving and nice. Amen. So in your home, in your family, in your workplace, with your neighbors, in your church, check your spirit this morning. Check your own spirit. What, what am I living out of? Where am I coming from? And I pray God reveal that to you and to me. People with responsibility, your boss in your workplace, your chief top big, big, big boss, that person in any company, do you know what they're looking for? Someone with a good spirit. Loads of people can do the job, but they don't get on with other people. They're a disaster. Loads of people can do your job. And anybody with responsibility, anybody with authority is looking for people, people. A people person. Looking for someone with a good spirit. And you will see this right throughout Scripture. Remember Daniel? No matter what Daniel touched, Daniel went to the top. Because he was a man, the Bible says, a wise and discerning spirit. Good spirit. Not proud, absolutely not. Not arrogant. A good spirit. And Daniel rose in his workplace. And so can you. Think of Joseph. No matter... Now you can sit here this morning and say, Ah, Pastor Mike... You don't understand the circumstance I'm in. You don't know my, you know, my life, my reality. Listen to this. Joseph was in prison. And he became the leader of the prison, the chief in the prison. Then he went to Pontifar's house. He became the head of Pontifar's house. Then he went into politics. He became the prime minister. It's not the circumstance. It didn't matter whether it was a prison or a home or the whole country. Someone with a good spirit is always sought out. It's not so much about doing your job well. There'll be plenty of other people who do it well too. It's about doing it well with a magnanimous, not an abusive or angry spirit. Something that will build a company, whatever it is you're in. Whatever your realm is. Check your spirit this morning. Many years ago, Rick gave me 28 people I had them for four months in a Bible college in Ireland, and we planted three churches from that group. We split them three ways. One of the churches failed. 
One of the churches is okay, but it's very small. And the other church is now the largest church in rural Ireland, maybe even Ireland, uh, Clayton Coast. 600 in the mother church and 200 in a church plant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that, that worked. That was about 16 years ago. But I remember that team. I had them in a Bible college residential. We all lived there for four months. And we trained them and sent them out. And they're Americans. You get, you know, 28 Americans, you've got 28 opinions, don't you know? So we got these guys, and I had to appoint a leader in that group. Now, there was one girl, and she was by far, by far, by far, the strongest, the most dominant. She's a born leader. Every, she organized everything. But the day came for the appointment. And I appointed someone else. <laughs> I appointed a very quiet, humble, teachable, and the shockwave went through that group. What, what, what? And I had to explain something. You may be a strong person. But that does not make you a strong Christian. You may be a strong Christian, but that does not make you a strong Christian leader. And her attributes were all very successful in the world, but they're a disaster in the church. Some people are very successful in the world, but they're a car crash in here. Amen? It just doesn't work. And that girl was completely deflated, and I hope she found herself. I hope you come to reality. What is it about me? Well, what it is, is you need to dump some of this stuff. Don't be like the apostles here. Pick up a good spirit. Pick up a good spirit. Amen. Check your spirit this morning. Check your spirit. Think of your own history. What's beneath the surface? Again, I talk to those of you who are in the business world or in just working in wherever you're working. And I remind you of this. Jesus did not start as a priest. He didn't start in ministry. Jesus began as a carpenter. In the workplace, doing a good job with a good spirit. Peter didn't start as an apostle. Peter started as a fisherman. Learning to do a good job with the right attitude and the right spirit. And then Christ comes along and, and calls him out of that. And the same Jesus who was called from carpentry to ministry took his cross back into the business district of Via Della Rosa. He took his cross right back into the streets where he worked, where they knew him. And this morning, you can do that. You can be that light. I spend 99% of my time talking to Christians because that's my job. And I will never see the people you see or be in the buildings you're in, or sit beside the workers that you work with. But you will. Tomorrow, you will. Most of you will. Be the light. Be a nice person. <laughs> right? Not a legalistic person. A nice person. A gracious person in your workplace. By their love, by your love, they shall know you. Represent your Savior, not your culture. Represent your Savior. Not your culture. What have you picked up from the past? And what do you need to cast out? What exchange needs to take place here this morning? For you to have a good spirit. And to walk in that good spirit. Do you want it? Are you teachable? Are you teachable? I don't know. Some of you, I don't know. Unteachable sometimes. Unteachable. Hallelujah. Jesus. So there's a shaking in the spirit. And some of you, some of those listening around the world, 
will end up following the wrong spirit. And they're going to end up in a bad spirit. Others will listen. They will check their spirit. And they will end up in the right place. Secure in God. As representatives of him. A few months ago, twice since I've been in LFC, which is not long. Twice I talked about how to receive the spirit. And then how to walk in the spirit. Right? It's, it's not rocket science, but it is received only spiritually. You can only get this stuff spiritually. It'll just go in one ear and out the other if you don't pray right now in your spirit. Do you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Do you want to walk every day in that spirit? Okay. You start with the blood. It didn't start with Pentecost, remember. See the whole picture. Many people talk to you. I want the baptism. I want the baptism. It didn't start with Pentecost. It started with the Last Supper. It started with the blood. And that he told them, I'm going to send the, you know, the Holy Ghost upon you. But first, I need you to be conscious of your own sinfulness, your own frailty, and your need for me. Nothing has changed. You want the Spirit? You want a good Spirit? It will start with the blood. We're going to have communion in a moment. It starts with the blood. Then you can receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. But listen carefully. Then it's an ongoing blood link. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 Daily they met in each other's homes for the breaking of bread. Amen. So you can, if you will humble yourself and recognize your own rights and wrongs today and your need for Christ, seek baptism in the Holy Spirit. You can receive that good spirit, but then on a daily ongoing basis. I believe in just following the book. And in the book, every day they had that communion in their home. I know some of you fathers do that here with your family. Well done. You need to do it. And that's how you keep the spirit. That's how you maintain a good and godly spirit. Amen? Are you ready for these days? We're going to have communion. I'm going to invite keyboard player, please. Um, go ahead and, and distribute the bread and wine. Just take a moment as they distribute the elements Take a moment. Angela, could you come, please? Take a moment and just reflect on your own spirit. Think of yourself. Father, I ask you to send a spirit of revelation on us. That we would see ourselves as we are. Not as we think we are. Not as other people say we are. But as you say we are. Just take a moment, folks. Take a moment. Hallelujah.